So we've got a different hero banner. What about the mobile version? Do not ignore these steps. Don't get to the end of your website and then go, oh, it does not look good. No, put in the time and do it now. So let's just go over here to our page and now let's hit the responsive mode. And we're now gonna view it as a, remember you gotta do it as a tablet as well. Um, it's the same kind of principle as what we're doing in the mobile, to be honest. I'm gonna increase this to be 378. And now because we're using two columns, we have uh, column one and we have column two. This is where you gotta make a decision now. Do you want the cat image above or below? I think the cat image actually deserves to be above. Let's go to advanced, go to responsive, and over here it says reverse columns. Reverse columns, there we go. Look, it's done exactly what we want. It's reversed it. Don't worry though, on the desktop, it will still be the right way around. Let's put that back into the mobile, 378. Now this image is way too big. If you care about your page speed insights, um, you've got to ensure that your first call to action, your main headline, your subheader are above the fold. Right now, we are we're near the fold. Look, the headline is creeping past the fold and you have to scroll now to see all the content. This will affect your page speed insight, your core web vital score. So please don't just go, oh, well, it's okay. I want a big image. That's fine as long as your call to action is somewhere at the top as well. Let us click the spacer in column two and let's shrink it down. Now, as I shrink it down, you can see what's happening. Look, if I go really small, the cat is kind of obliviated. So let's go with something like this. And you, this, the, the exact side will be dictated by the content. So we'll come back to tweak that in a moment. Let's now go down to our column. At the moment, we've got some padding going on, yeah? And we've got none at the top and bottom. And you can now see that everything is very creepy to the top. The word creepy wasn't the right word to use, but we'll, we'll, we'll use it for the purpose of this video. Let's just zero everything out. I can now see what my spacing is. I will always give a 15 on the left and right. Some people put one, two percent. I just put 15 pixels just to create a bit of breathing space between your left and your right margin. Now from the top, I am probably gonna go with a 20 and a 20 as well. Again, I just need a little bit of breathing space there for now. Now this wording is way too big for the mobile. So let's go over to our style. Let's go over to the size and rather than having an REM of 2.4, I am going to say you wanna go for about 1.5, 1.6, depending on the font family. That is perfectly readable. Okay, on a mobile phone, you're looking at it on a screen right now. It is perfectly readable. Um, this divider button, I think that's okay. I mean, we can actually shrink it down. No, we can't. Sorry, I forgot. For the weighting, you can't shrink it down, but we could shrink down the width. I am going to decrease this to be about 60% on the mobile. So we get a divider line, but it's not completely cutting across. Now for the subheader, I would decrease the size of this as well. This is 1.3, I would take it, sorry, 1.4. I would go down to 1.3. Just because the 1.4 felt not, it was smaller than the headline, but I think we could you know, shrink it down a bit more. Now for the button, this is where you have to have a think now in terms of do you still want it on the left-hand side or do you want it more in the center? Do you want to stretch it or do you want to put it on the right? I think it looks okay like that. There is a part of me that wants to move it into the center as well. And looking at it now, I'm actually going to say put it in center just because it's the way our brains work. Now, can you see we have tons more padding space here? We have free estate. We've gone from having nothing, where it was creeping beyond the fold, to now having a stake. This is good. Let's now go back over here. Let me now increase uh, this to be 20 for the left and right. And as soon as you do that, the word, you know, we lose a little bit of a state. And I'm going to put a 40 and a 40 like that. And that now looks pretty much okay to me. You, I mean, there's even a potential here to increase the size of the button spacing. So it was 10 before, we'll go with 20. And that now is looking okay, right? So let me just view that now uh, like that. You are gonna say to me though, but look, there is still a bit of creep going on there. You gotta scroll to get to the bottom of the column. Ignore that because the content, what's going to drive your viewer to 
hit the button or to go deeper or further into your website is now above the fold. And I could, if I want, increase the size of the image. I feel like you could probably get away with going something like that. Something like that is absolutely fine now for your mobile phone. Of course, you can use um, websites like responsinator.com or responsively.app where you can emulate your website as you view it on Android, iPhones, whatever, and you get a feeling for it. Well, how does it look on different devices? Do you need to pull it up a little bit more, add a bit more padding or something like that? So this is a great way to just ensure that your website looks good on the mobile. And like I said, this is the mobile view. This is the desktop view. Nothing has shifted out of focus. You haven't lost anything. I hope that's making sense.